Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is your boy Keenan Lambert and right now I'm in Havana, Cuba. I want to explain to you guys how I got addicted to this place called Cuba. Run the intro. Analiza tu corazón y devuélveme el amor que me robaste de los vidos. Tu amor es como un pupera que se va y regresa. Tu amor es un rompecabezas que yo no puedo resolver porque le falta pieza. Yo sé que estás enamorado. West blockade, economic blockade, has caused a lot of problems for the island. With the problems that the island has had, the people are very much one of an inventive nature. People do what they have to do to get by here. Yet, even though they are at, you know, uh, a societal baseline, the people who are here are super genuine. You do have a lot of people who will try to hustle you, yes, but there are a lot of people here who are super genuine, loving, and really caring, and they want to take care of you genuinely. Not for what you can do for them, but genuinely. Now, there are a lot of other places that I can go to in the world pretty easily, pretty quickly, but I keep on coming back to this island, and it isn't just one thing that keeps me from coming back. I know a lot of you may think that it might be the women, I might have some girlfriend stashed away here. Nah, it's nothing like that. However, however, the girls here in Cuba are very nice. And they're not like women in other Caribbean or Latin American nations that have access to pounds of makeup and the surgeries and all these other things. The women here are extremely natural. Um, and along with that, Cubans can't afford to engorge themselves with food the way how you know, we do back in the developed world. So a lot of folks here are relatively slim and in good shape. They walk a lot. A lot of people here do not have cars. They have to walk to transportation lines, then take transportation lines to like a central area, then walk to where their house is. It's a lot of walking. Even though healthcare access here is, you know, it's universal, it is free. People don't have access to great dentists, right? So in many cases, you do see people that have some compromised dental uh, situations. I actually had a friend who reached out to me um, in, a, in a chat. Uh, he met a beautiful, beautiful woman, but there was one downside with her. And I was like, oh word, what was it? She had brown teeth, okay? Gentlemen, I have a question to you. And ladies too, if you meet someone who is maybe an eight and a half to a nine and a half, beautiful, really good personality, but they got brown teeth, will you still entertain them? Let me know in the comments below. I feel like I've achieved the Cuban hood dude starter pack. I've got the grandfather in Senor Tomas, AKA Mr. Jefferson. I've got Alina, who is kind of like a combination of a little sister and a goddaughter. And then I have the fake toxic ex-girlfriend from Centro Havana that won't leave me alone. My fake former stepson, sorry little bro. And then I got my Tio Pepe that always looks out for me. And finally, I got the girl in Miami who's gonna marry me, get me a visa, and get me up out of Cuba. My Cuban hood credentials are complete. All I need to reach level two is a Cuban baby mom and a kid that I actually don't take care of. But I don't know, I guess I'm shooting blanks out here. Now, depending on where you're coming from, the flight to Cuba can be a little expensive. If you're coming from Europe, UK, those places, it, the flight can be a little bit expensive. If you're coming from Canada, depends, I guess, maybe the airline that you're taking. From the United States now, with the airlines fighting each other and uh, causing all sorts of competition, the flight is super cheap. I was able to get here for just over 300 bucks. And after I booked, I saw that there were actually flights going for 280. You had to connect in Miami, but I don't mind that at all. So when you factor in the cost of the flight and also the relatively low cost of hotel housing here in Cuba, you're not spending that much money. And then once you get on the ground, once you get on the ground, un unless you know, you're living a lifestyle you know, like a rapper, even if you're living like a rapper actually, you can get a lot of bang for your buck here in Cuba. You know, the society here in Cuba is just, you know, so different and, you know, to, to someone who's thinking about it or experiencing it in the moment, it can seem backwards, right? 
um, but not in a bad way, just in, in the sense that there's a different order of things. I mean, you get people who are trained in the engineers who opt to work as taxi drivers instead because they're simply making more money ex uh, encountering tourists. For example, you get people who are trained as engineers, you know, they've gone to school for years and then they go off and they're working for the government, but due to the low salary and just the ever increasing demands of, of um, li living costs here in Cuba, folks are leaving their what should be good government jobs to work in the tourism industry. That's been happening here for years. So instead of working as an engineer, somebody might opt to work as a taxi driver as they can make far more money. As a taxi driver, you may make, maybe you make three trips from the airport to and fro, and maybe you might get a couple of side, side gigs. So say you're making $85 a day, right? You're making $85 a day as a taxi driver. Knock off some money for gas. There's actually a huge petroleum problem here in Cuba. So say you're making, I want to say $60 a day. You're making $60 a day. Somebody who has a government salary and a good, good job may be making that same amount in a month. Pardon my overestimation here. The situation in Cuba has actually gotten a lot worse. Due to rampant inflation, the vast majority of Cuban government workers are making $20 and under a month. And it's for that reason why there's an exodus of educated people out of Cuba to perceived greener pastures. Oh yeah. Hace tantos años que yo vengo subiendo esta loma. Qué agradecida estoy. So you as ugly foreigner walking down the street, you meet this beautiful woman. She's she's more than willing to entertain you because you are potentially her plane ticket out of Cuba. We often talk about Cuba as a place that's you know, stuck in pre-revolutionary times, so stuck in the 50s. Um, it's something that's cute and something that we like to say. However, this society is rapidly moving forward. Um, they're very much pro-LGBTQIA plus rights. When it comes to race relations, although it's not perfect here, they are far beyond what we are um, in the States. Gentlemen, when you come here to Cuba, you will see a lot of beautiful women. Um, I encourage all of you to shoot your shot. When a shot becomes available, you shoot it. If you see a waitress that is beautiful, you say what's up. If you see a woman walking down the street, you say hi. My name is Jacob or whatever your name is, right? If you see a woman in a balcony, right? I've actually done this before. You see a woman in a balcony, um, and you know, in my case, she actually walked away from the balcony, and then her aunt came forward, and I was like, hey, hey, um, I want to talk to your niece or that, that young chick that was up there, and you know, I, I was literally a part of the family in five minutes. Okay, gentlemen, when you come here to Cuba, shoot your shot. However, any girl that pulls up on you in Cuba, you should be skeptical of. No, no puedo. Okay. No puedo, no puedo. No, no puedo. No puedo, no puedo. I gotta go. <laughs> However, a beautiful young lady with a job that you approach is a completely different thing. The problem is, after you shoot your shot, is the aftermath. What comes with that, okay? You can go from, as I said before, ugly foreigner just walking down the street to you know, a member of somebody's family real quick. And then there are often obligations and attachments that come with that. Okay? I mean, people in, in Cuba, you know, they, they really want to get out. The situation here is difficult, and people understand that the rest of the world is different. Um, you have access to luxuries pretty easily in other parts of the world. You have access to things here in Cuba, but people don't generally make the money to afford them, and that's the problem. You know, I know many of Canadian brothers who I meet here uh, from the streets and they tell me this is their 20th time in Cuba. I've actually seen in the comments on some of these videos that there are some of you that have been to Cuba 50 plus times. That That's crazy, it's incredible. And you know, it just reaffirms that some of you out there have the same disease that I have, addiction to Cuba. Now, some of what makes Cuba addictive 
is how inexpensive it is, right? So if you're somebody that has a bad habit, such as maybe, you know, you might like, I don't know, you like a lot of liquor, right? You like to drink. You can drink in Cuba for low. If you like to go crazy in the club and buy bottles, you can do that for a fraction of what the price is in the States. I mean, like a literal fraction, maybe like one seventh of the price. So for some of you travel boys that are out there, travel brothers, travel sisters, be careful because Cuba is super addictive. When you don't speak Spanish here in Cuba, it becomes like an opening for people to scam you, okay? So if you don't speak Spanish, I do also you know, want to caution you, maybe you, know, you ought to take extra care while you're here because people will target you a little bit more when they know that you don't speak Spanish. Okay, so I want to quickly address my brothers who travel for the sake of uh, just dealing with chicas. Gentlemen, please treat this island like a delicate egg. Sure, do what you do, but please do not ruin this place. I beg you. Okay, do what you do, have fun, but please don't ruin it. Okay, you take that to mean whatever you want it to mean. Just treat this place with care, okay? It is my favorite. Do not ruin it. Do not turn it into Medellin, Cartagena. Por favor. There's something about Havana, about Cuba in general, that reminds me of central Brooklyn where I grew up. Now, I grew up in a place where there was a, you know, a lot of West Indian migrants came to uh, New York, settled, and you know, raised their kids in a particular area. And there was this village mentality that you see here in Cuba. I mean, it wasn't a place where people, a lot of people moved in and moved out. No, it was static. The same families lived in the same houses over time. And with that, there was like a village mentality, right? People become like family. Speaking of family, I want you guys to meet a fellow family member of the channel, Brother Les. He's also terribly addicted. I'm out here in Havana, Cuba. Uh, this is my second time actually in three weeks. And how did I end up in Cuba? Well, I was searching YouTube, of course looking for travel videos, and I came across Keenan's channel and it was very informative, very straight to the point, but also I had a lot of respect for the culture, for the people wherever he was visiting, uh, right to the point. And uh, so I decided uh, to hit him up after I seen a Cuban video and I'm like, you know, what is this really about? You know, how, how did I get there? I mean, he had videos on everything, but I wanted a one on one. Very easy to talk to, straightforward. Gave me all the information, more information than you see on YouTube, and you know, I booked a flight right away after that. Came here and fell absolutely in love. So much I came back in three weeks. Um, Keenan was the man. I mean, he told me everywhere to go, how to go, when to go, who to go with, who not to go with. And uh, it was just a really, really great experience. Not just coming here, but having a personal guide back home and someone that could be trusted. And you know, he knows the lay of the land here. And it made my experience that much better that at this point, I'm, anytime I see an American, I'm, I'm telling them exactly what to do and how to do. And I'm you know, also plugging them in with Keenan because he is the man. So I just want to give a moment to give thanks and appreciation. And I'll be making more content. Um, so just sit back and enjoy. And uh, once again, Keenan, I can't thank you enough. You've made my travel and a cultural experience that changed my life. Much appreciated. Let me show you my Casa Cubana on this trip. I can't believe this place is only like uh, $50 a night. It's crazy. It's $51 a night with tax and everything included. This place has a strong nautical theme. It 
Cibadado is a place that's very different from Old Havana, Centro Havana, my favorite Cayo Hueso area. I'm considering a video where I bring Mr. Jefferson into Bedado and we just rock out for a day. It's very clear that although he's happy and comfortable where he's at, he doesn't get a chance to enjoy his own island. If you're interested in this place, I'll actually put the Airbnb link in, not the description box, but I'll pin it in the comment section below. I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really appreciate you guys watching me over time, coming in and supporting the channel. I appreciate you so much. I'll catch you in the next video. It might be here in Havana. It might be elsewhere. I don't know. I'll see you. Peace out. See you later.